sits in studio with some expert insight. We have Dr. Matt Herman from the Department of Geological Sciences at California State University, Bakersfield. Hi, we talked to you last time there was a big <laughs> yeah. earthquake. This talk about a shaker. Now, when we're talking about the difference between magnitude 8 and magnitude 9, that's exponentially greater, right? It is, yes. So what is an 8.8? .8? Yeah, so if we think about it in terms of energy, an 8.8 .8 is 16 times bigger than Ooh. a magnitude 8. So it's not just uh, a little bit larger. This is a really large earthquake. You mentioned the scaling of great being magnitude 8. This is really closer to a 9 in terms of its nature and size and energy uh, than the eights that we usually see about once a year. And is it correct that an 8.0 earthquake globally, we see roughly one of those every year somewhere? Or is, or is yeah, that, that exaggerated? That's about right, yes. Okay. Okay, so then with this happening, of course, as Californians, we were immediately concerned about the waves. For young kids who are home watching right now, can you explain how an earthquake across an ocean can affect California? Yeah, so this type of earthquake is both very large and underwater. And what it does is it lifts the seafloor over a huge area by a few feet, and all that water's got to go somewhere. It's lifted up, and water doesn't like being in a pile, so it falls to the side. And when it falls to the side, that's what we call a tsunami. And these tsunamis not only hit local regions as large waves, but they also travel across the water. Just like if you throw a rock in a pond, you see waves yes. travel out. The tsunami waves travel across the Pacific Ocean. They go about the speed of a jet plane. So something like a few hundred miles per hour across the open ocean. So they hit Hawaii in a matter of hours, California a little bit later if they're coming from Kamchatka. Was this a little different because from what I'm reading, this was uh, considered it's a mega thrust fault mm -hmm. um, in that area. So they're prone to an earthquake of this size because of the so-called mega thrust yeah. going upwards. So, so a mega thrust is just a word we use for this type of plate boundary gotcha. where one plate goes under another. In this case, the Pacific plate is going west underneath Kamchatka Peninsula, which is actually on the North American plate. Okay. The geometry so is a little funky. So it's still sliding, it's not up and down like this. Yeah, so, okay. so what happens is the Pacific plate's trying to force itself underneath Kamchatka Peninsula, but they're stuck due to friction. And so uh, Kamchatka gets squeezed, 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 squeezed like a spring. And then finally, they can't hold each other back anymore. And boom, it pops back. And when it pops back, that is the earthquake. It produces the strong shaking. And it lifts up the seafloor over this big area and produces the big wave. And in an earthquake like this, who is probably more most at risk? Was it, was it Japan and Hawaii in terms of seeing a massive wave? Yeah, honestly, it's the people in Kamchatka. Uh, oh, yeah. There course, aren't many yeah. people in Kamchatka. Right, uh, but, but yeah, you're right. local people, the, with the severity of shaking with the size of the wave, if they live nearby, those were going to be the people who are at most risk. Um, there's a combination of factors that affect the, uh, what the size of the wave is going to be. Generally, the biggest wave is directed right outboard, so eastward of the event. Okay. So a place like Hawaii, even though it's far away, can get a pretty substantial wave. In fact, um, the Tsunami Warning Center focuses on Hawaii because every big mega thrust earthquake along the Pacific will generate a tsunami that hits Hawaii. Wow. Just amazing. And then one final question for you. Unfortunately, in the days of social media, we're going to see misinformation flying. Yeah. So because we had this earthquake, people immediately are saying California's next, the Pacific Ring of Fire. What can you predict after a major shake? Yeah, so what we know is there will be aftershocks in the region around Kamchatka. We've seen the huge number of aftershocks, and some of them are quite large. Um, California is not at greater risk now because of this earthquake. But California's got a lot of faults. There could be an earthquake today or tomorrow in California. It's not necessarily related to the one across the Pacific Ocean. We don't think it would be related. But we have plenty of earthquake hazard here. And so we just need to be prepared here in California. Perfect. I agree. I, I wish we could talk to you for another half an hour, <laughs> yeah. but we are out of time. Dr. Herman, thank you, thank so, you much. so much. Yeah, thank you for having me.